Okay. Obviously, we're disappointed in the outcome of last week. I um, thought our players played really hard. I thought we uh, fought our way back into the game with an opportunity <clears throat> to win it at the end. Um, as I stated Friday night, it's my responsibility to make sure that uh, our execution, our operation, everything's intact. Uh, that did not happen. Um, so, you know, that's something that we have addressed, worked on, and got corrected. Uh, obviously, we need needed more uh, sideline constraint, and uh, that's been addressed. Um, and when any time something doesn't go that way, it doesn't go the way that you had practiced it, of course, we practice that situation quite often, then you have to address why that didn't work and fix it. So we've done that. We had a great, uh, great meetings yesterday. Uh, and uh, we are really uh, excited and locked in to get ready for this game against Boise State, a team that we have never beaten. And uh, obviously a huge challenge for us. Uh, Andy Avalos, first year there, is a heck of a football coach. He's got a really talented football team. They're very explosive offensively. Um, Obviously present a lot of different challenges offensively, good running attack, good throwing attack, really good players, really good personnel, excellent offensive line, veteran offensive line on defense. Um, you know, I think that they present a lot of problems. Uh, Matt Lock, their big defensive tackle, the nickel, uh, um, I'll probably mispronounce his name, Kenny, Kenny Howe. And uh, their boundary safety, Skinner, I think those are outstanding players. Uh, Matlock was an All-Mountain West uh, honorable mention. Phil Steele, All-American. They're big and strong up front, uh, stopping the run, and uh, I think well put together. I think this is, without a question, uh, you know, the most talented team that, you know, uh, you know next to Iowa that, that, that we have seen for sure. And, uh, you know, and, and, and any time you can make a statement that we've never beat them, that, 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 that tells you how, how large a challenge that really is. They've had a week off, um, you know, and uh, we're, we're coming off of uh, a physical first half of the season, but I think we're imp improving every week. And so we're looking forward to this challenge. We respect the challenge for sure, and uh, we're certainly glad to be home and uh, can't wait to uh, – get the week of our preparation with our on the field with the players started tomorrow. We had a little bit on Sunday. Um, the mentality with our team is outstanding, locked in, um, and, and, and ready to rock and roll. So happy to answer any questions. So you mentioned with the, the field goal situation, you know, sideline restraint, I think was the phrase. So was, were they supposed to be held by you know, a coach or something until kind of given the code or whatever to go well, off? Well, like I said, I addressed this Friday night really transparently, really honestly and also followed it up quickly with making sure everybody understood that when there's an error, that's an error on the coach, and that error was on me. I'm responsible for that, which I said very clearly on Friday evening, okay? Um, and after going through everything, obviously we work on this situation, as I said, and, um, you know, uh, we just got to do a better job. I've got to make sure that I do a better job of the operation of, of, of how that how that went. You guys obviously still got a clean field goal off. Just from going back and watching it, do you feel like rushing the team out had an impact on that? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, the one thing I said Friday night that I didn't have the advantage of watching the tape is when you go into a mayday field goal, which you have to have ready in that situation, if you don't get the first down, you've got a mayday field goal. It. That's a quickened tempo, which is what we work on all the time. That's a quick in tempo, okay? So we were in, we ended up in May Day. Uh, didn't need to be, but we did. We ended up there. And so that's a quick in tempo. And you can see on the film that uh, Caden didn't have the same setup time that he would normally have. So, of course, I'm going to tell you that if we had the normal setup time, we wouldn't have had the rush steps. Now, you have to have that if you're in May Day. We didn't need to be in May Day. We didn't call May Day. So, we know, we, on, the fate, on the film, it's clear, clear on the film, our coaching staff is directing our offense, and our offense is going to spike the ball, just like, just like we're supposed to do, okay? But we had to have May Day ready on the sideline, and we did, okay? So, 
it's my responsibility to make sure that that operation is controlled properly. That's on me, directly on me, okay? I've got to have the foresight to anticipate in those pressure situations, things can happen, and you've got to have the uh, constraints in place. You brought up the fact that this program has never beaten Boise State. How do you as a coaching staff use that this week, or do you just let it be what it is? Say that again for me. But you mentioned you haven't beaten, this program has never beaten Boise State. Do you as a coaching staff use that as a motivational tool, or do you just let, let it sit there and let the players do with it what it is? No, I mean, we mention it to the players. You know, we haven't beaten Boise. That's the high watermark in the conference. To their credit, they've done it year in and year out. They've established that, that tradition, that, 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 that watermark. So, you know, if you want to build your program, you want, to, you, you want to try to get those wins against those premier teams. That's a premier team. So we haven't done it. Of course the players need to know that we haven't done it, you know. And it's something that uh, would be a great accomplishment. But respect how hard that would be, because there's a reason that hasn't happened. Because you're playing a really quality football team. They got a great, they've got great personnel, and they do a great job, as we well stated, you know, time and time again. So it'll be a great challenge, and uh, um, you know, we're certainly uh, looking forward to it. You know, but respect it. Yeah. We got one from Bob. Bob, go ahead. I, we, we didn't hear your question. I'm sorry. You were muted, but we got you now. Go ahead. Try again, Coach. Uh, just wanted to know, I looked at your defensive numbers. They look really, really good. What's yeah. part of your strength defensively? How have you been able to come up holding people under 300 yards a game? I mean, I just think we're playing well up front. Our front seven's playing well. I mean, one of the things we, we did yesterday was kind of go in review of year to date right now. And where we are on offense, defense, and special teams, you know, we're in the top five of our conference in a lot of categories throughout those three things. And obviously on defense, you know, uh, you know, I don't have it all in front of me right now, but, uh, you know, our front seven's playing well. We've got a lot of sacks. We, we, I, we have the most sacks in the conference, and we're one of the fewest giving up sacks in the conference from our offensive line. So there's a lot of those stats in terms of rushing the football, in terms of defending the rush. You know, um, so there's a lot of good things going on. But our front seven, I think, is playing at a high level, and we're able to stop the run and get pressure on the quarterback. Is what we're seeing with Gary Williams just you giving him more and more in the offense to do or that he's earned through practice? Yeah, I mean, I think he's developing. You know, Gary is a talented guy. And uh, we knew that from the beginning, and just trying to get him more and more comfortable with the scheme and, 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 and increase his role. I think he and Cam and Trey, those are, th and, and are really, you know, and, and Brian Plenty, those are quality tight ends. We've got a good working group of tight ends to work with. They all, you know, have different skills a little bit, you know, um, but, but Gary is a powerful guy who's also got really elite ball skills. And uh, so, you know, uh, you know, again, like the other guys, I mean, he poses quite a quite a passing threat to an opposing defense. Yet he can line up in the I formation as a fullback and kind of come downhill and rock you pretty good. So that's a, that's an interesting combination. He's a guy that we saw improve over the spring. He really yeah. kind of made a step forward. Where has he continued to do that? What's he gotten better at that made like John go? He's got to be a bigger piece of our puzzle. Where have you seen the most improvement? I guess from spring to now. I I think understanding of the offense. You know, consistency um, and, and, and just learning it. You know, listen, the tight end possession here is really hard. Not only from a physical standpoint, you got to, you know, you got to be really good in the throw game and the route running game, but you have to be able to block. And then the alignments, all the different, I mean, they align up, they line up in a lot of different alignments. So there's a lot of formational things you have to be on top of. And, and, and that's, I believe that's, that's very difficult. Um, on that position. But the more depth we have there, the better off we are because, like, you know, like it's a lot. Like, Trey gets gassed because, you know, you're talking about asking a man to be as elite in a throw game as he is in the run game, and that's, that's hard to do and play that many snaps. So, with the emergence of Gary right now in that rotation, 
it's helping us. We're still trying to find ways to give Trey a blow where we where we can. Without obviously, you don't want to have him off the field too often. But if you're if you're if you're if you're you know if you're running somewhere between 75 and 85 plays, that's a lot. That's a lot. Offensive line, you still have to do some shuffling, but you know, especially that you know the run blocking was really good there. Uh, what are you seeing? How are they holding up? How are they doing? You know, especially you know, a guy like Shaboni, the move he's made. And, you yeah. Know, well, I mean, we're down four. And uh, we're still progressing. Uh, Ty Marks got some quality play time. Mike Schifoni did a hell of a job. Obviously, he left the game with an, an with an ankle turn. Um, and then Ty Marks came in, and he did a hell of a job. So we're hoping to get some guys back. We've been hit pretty hard up front. But yes, I thought the offensive line played quite well in that game. They, you know, they when you watch the tape, they did a really good job. Really good job. You know, we left a lot of points on the field. Now this time, not in the red zone. We actually were pretty darn good in the red zone, but just we had some. We, we had a lot of opportunity. Let's 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 leave it like that. Why some some guys that you know? We just had a lot of opportunity, and, and we didn't capitalize on it. And, um, I thought our quarterback played exceptionally well. He was like sixty something percent completion rate. Um, but we but we you know we've got to capitalize on all the opportunities we have to score. We. we We'd be extremely explosive right now. We're just, we just, we, we got to keep growing. Just, a, we're just a little bit away from having those, that real explosive outbreak, um, you know. And like I said, we got better in the red zone, but you know, we you know, just there's more meat on the bone. Let's let's just leave it like that. Dante, you have a front set. Oh, go ahead. Dante made a big catch on that final drive. Mm -hmm. Just what do you think his involvement will look like this week? Hopefully, more every week. It was great to have him back for the first time. He's by no means 100%. You probably could see that, but um, his he made he made a he made a handful of plays. You know, four or five maybe. I you know right off the top of my head, but um, it just you know he's one of our biggest playmakers. We haven't had him. I think I think that's going to help us. It's, you know, we had a lot of explosive plays in the game. We we chart that and we have a goal for that. Our goal is to be 8% explosive. I think we were 12% explosive or maybe even 14. So that was pretty good. But trust me, there were some guys, there were some guys that had great opportunities to score touchdowns. So um, that's exciting. It's encouraging. Um, obviously disappointed that uh, we, we could have, you know, we turned the ball over uh, on the road early. Our first four series were not good. We went punt, I believe, punt, turnover, punt, turnover. That's not very characteristic of us. You haven't seen that. That happened on the road. Tough to overcome that. But we kind of did, but tough to overcome that. Um, so, you know, those are, those are some little things, you know. Um, you know. Anyways, there's a lot to be encouraged about. Our players just have a magnificent attitude. They're jacked up. I mean, they, they know how we're growing. They, 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 they see our capability. And one thing about players, they, 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 they know. They know. They see it all. And um, they are locked armed, um, really together, and, and, and really can't wait for this challenge. I, this is an extremely uh, resilient, uh, bought-in football team, and it's, uh, it's really gratifying and fun to be around these guys. Um, I'm enjoying it quite a bit, you know. Um, just everybody's got each other's back, and that's what a good team should be. Uh, that, that's what we're working on. That's as important as anything we're talking about, and that's happening. So I said weeks ago there will be some roller coaster rides, and we've had some for sure, um, offensively, defensively, special teams. We've had, we've had roller coaster rides, but it hasn't deterred our football team. And... Uh, and that's really cool. That's really cool. And we'll need that. We need to play really locked in this week. Steve, it seems like late against South Dakota State and then especially against Utah State in situations where you kind of had to spread it out, you know, go tempo, Tots and Tails really thrive. I know you guys run a lot of different sets, and it's not to say you haven't had success as a passer elsewhere, but would you maybe like to spread it out a little bit more just given that he seems to be pretty good, you know, in those scenarios. I think you got to do it all, you know. Um, 
I think we want to do it all well, honestly. Um, you know, I think we spread it out when we feel we need to. I think we throw we throw the ball a fair amount, you know. Um, we're, we're obviously on first and second down. We're a heavy play action team, which complements our run game. And then, of course, on third down, like everybody, you know, we're in a third down package. Um, we, at times, have gone to empty and some sp more spreadier sets on first and second down. But, you know, you want to get your playmakers the ball, right? I mean, ultimately, that's your goal. And so, you know, for example, you know, David Bailey, we want to get his touches. Uh, you know, Trey McBride, want to get his touches. Um, obviously, Dante's coming back, want to get his touch. I mean, so you're trying to constantly think about, okay, what's the best way to guarantee that, you know, guys are going to touch that football? So I think we mix-match it. Um, I certainly wouldn't argue with your commentary. I certainly would tell you that, um, as we grow and develop, there's no reason why we might not be able to be in, you know, in, in, in more passing situations in different parts of the game. Um, I think we're trying to develop our whole football program right now, quite frankly. I, I, that's honestly what we want to do. I, looking for all phases of the offense to grow and to develop. And, you know, you see that. And it, I still think we're talking about consistency. And, you know, hopefully we're going to become more and more consistent. Offensively, we've played some outstanding defenses, you know, and that's been a challenge, but it's been good for our growth. Um, I think this team we're playing this week, you know, is a very complete team. I think they're excellent on defense, um, and I think they're excellent on offense. Uh, their personnel is fantastic, you know, so, um, you know, that's, that's the challenge. But I, I look at this as a very complete team we're playing here right now, very complete. They can run it. They can throw it. On defense, they can stop the run. Uh, they're pretty good in the back end. Um, so, I mean, they're good in special teams. I just think this is a really good football. Other teams have been elite in certain areas, you know. And sometimes whether you match up to that eliteness or not comes out a little bit. But this is a darn good football team we're playing, you know. So we've got to we've – We've got to play at a high, our high, high level. I hope that this is the high. We, this is this week culminates to be the best that we've played. I hope that's the case. We'll see. We'll see. Coach, uh, similar to the question I asked you about your defense through seven games, give us sort of a cliff notes version of what you think has been the strengths and best things about your offense. We do a good job of getting the ball in the hands of the playmakers that we have available. Uh, we're, we can run the football. We can throw the football. I think we're difficult to defend because of the run, the play action, and, and the drop back pass. Our multiplicity on offense. But, but I will say this. On both sides of the ball, since you asked me about defense, now you're asking me about offense. It all starts up front. That's my belief. And I think we're becoming a very physical football team on both sides of the line of scrimmage. That's not, not counting the other players. I'm just saying we needed to develop as a physical football program. You got to run it. You got to stop the run. I think we've developed that. And now we're starting to, in the back end on defense, we've, we've gotten better. We've got a way, you know, we still got growth, obviously, everywhere. But, and on, and on offense, you know, I, I think we're, con we're developing our multiplicity. And when you have multiplicity, sometimes that can be a little bit execution. That can, your execution can take a while because, you, you know, you do a little more than a lot of people do. But I like where we're headed, and I like the way we're headed. Our, our multiple tight end sets, they're getting more and more comfortable in that style of offense. So I, I really do like where we're headed um, a lot. But you know what? I say it every week. It's a week-to-week -week game, and, uh, you know, here we go. We got a new week. It's a week. To, what have you done for me this week? I mean, here we go. I mean, we got to play. We got to be right. We got to play at a high level. Um, doesn't really matter what's happened. Um, we feel like we're playing one of the best teams we've played, and so um, we've got to worry about what we can control, and that's us and how we practice and how we continue to grow. You either get better or you get worse, but you don't stay the same. We've been getting better. Okay? And we've got to continue on that pathway. Are we perfect? No. Uh, am I perfect? By no means, no. And so what we're all trying to do is continue together to lock arms and grow and develop in all phases and, and just continue to become a better football team. Thanks, Coach. With your front seven playing the way it is on defense, 
does it allow your defense overall to do more things, allow it to grow? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had to think about that for a second, but yes. I mean, because it all starts up front. If you can't stop the run, it's going to be a long, hard day for you. You know, so you've got to be able to do that. But then when you can do that, you know, it, it allows you in the back end to do some different things, right? If you can't stop the run, we all understand that you then have to load the box and put people in all the time in man coverage. Huh. Well, then that starts to put stresses on you. In a perfect world, you want to mix and match in and out a little bit and disguise what you're doing, right? And so, uh, but you ha at points, you have to be able to stop the run without loading the box. Otherwise, it's just like the run game. If you can't run the ball when they're playing too high, that's a problem. you got to make them load the box to stop the run game so then you can hit your play actions and your shots. At least that's our philosophy. I mean, other people have different philosophies. You know. When you look at I mean, people think of Patch as a pass rush specialist type guy, um, but you haven't had to load the box to stop the run. Is that one of the most impressive parts of your run defense numbers to use? You haven't had to put an eighth, ninth guy in there to do it. Yeah, I mean, look at Patch, look at Toby, look at Manny. Um, these are guys that, I mean, they're as good a pass. Dev, Dev Phillips? <laughs> Those guys are outstanding pass rushers and outstanding, you know. We don't have to bring somebody out of the game and put somebody else in to stop the run or to rush the quarterback. Now, sometimes we do. We want a little more speed, maybe. But these guys are talented guys that can do both. Um, you know, and they've got leadership, you know, so they're tough. You know, Toby and Patch and Dev and Manor, they're tough guys. They're, we practice against that every day. That makes us better too, right? You know what I mean? And they practice against the offense. I mean, like, like I, I said that when I took the job here, right? Like, you know, I'm into complementary football because I think to build a really good team, you've got to have – if the offense just does their thing and the defense just does their thing and they don't complement each other, how do you develop as a football team? If you've got an offense that just chucks it all over the place, then how do you stop the run? How does the defense get a chance to practice? We can practice ones versus ones and get highly competitive reps. That makes our football team better because we play complementary football. Our special teams are designed to tilt the field, you know, and we got guys that have done a phenomenal job with that, right? So, I mean, that all tries to go all together by design. And, and so I like that development right now. And, and we have good players in those positions, for sure. One last question for you. This Boise State game was the one that kind of also triggered your emotions on special teams last year. When you look back a year later, I know you've had some ups and downs on special teams, but your overall growth, how do you feel about that? Oh, I, I feel good about it. Yeah, I mean, we've 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 done a lot of good things in specialty. We haven't had a tremendous amount of issues. We've had a couple, you know, like like last week we were kicking away from their dominant return. That's the first time we'd done that, and we had one issue, um, and got blocked in the back. But um, I thought I thought the plan was excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, we're we're fundamentally, I think I think playing at an extremely high level. I like our coverage units. Um, our, pro our struggles last year had a lot to do with COVID because we were constantly hamstrung in shifting personnel. I would say the only thing I'm a little concerned of right now is lately we've been shuffling personnel again, okay, because of injuries. And so, you know, you got a lot of time invested in a certain group of guys, and all of a sudden it's like each week now over the last couple, three weeks, we've got a lot of different faces going in there. That usually concerns me because that's when you start to have breakdowns, especially on some of your coverage units. We're fighting that a little bit right now. You know, um, we're battling it. It attacks your linebackers and your safeties. When you get dinged up at those positions, it really has a it has a problem for you. Um, and if I had to say that's that's been our challenge right now is the adjustment, um, putting too many new faces in the in those in those positions. Um, has been challenging and guys not getting I'm a big believer uh, in in you got to get a game rep in practice if you don't get a game rep then you're not game ready so we got too many guys right now that aren't getting enough game reps in certain deals if that's you know for whatever reason their hamstrings tight this that there's a, there's a number of things going on right now and so 
I think that showed up a little bit. And uh, but I, I, I like where we are. Um, you know, from a standpoint of we've got good players, um, and we just have to. It's our job to continually put them in the best positions, and uh, you know, and take care of you know situational football. And, and that's our job, you know, um, and that's what we have to do a good job of, you know, um, which we work on very, very hard here, you know, so. Okay, guys.